mud piles, get smashed, the four T's, get gap on the metro. These are all medical mnemonics. Medical students and the medical profession as a whole love mnemonics because they're fun and a helpful way to learn the absurd amount of information that we need to learn in medical school and residency. So what are the best mnemonics? The ones you've got to know. Well, I'm gonna run through three that I think are the top ones to know based on my very subjective criteria. I use them, I think they're very helpful. You might not have heard of them before. The first one is mud piles. This is a classic and it's used to help people remember the causes of anion gap metabolic acidosis. Essentially, these are different processes that can cause anions to build up in the blood and make patients very acidotic. N is for methanol, U is for uremia, D is for diabetic ketoacidosis, P is for propylene glycol, I, I is for iron or isoniazide, L is for lactic acidosis, E is for ethanol or ethylene glycol, and S is for salicylates. This mnemonic comes up a ton in internal medicine because patients get acidotic a lot, especially in the ICU. So you're often gonna need to run through this mnemonic in those situations. When I was in medical school, I had a particularly traumatic event associated with this mnemonic, so it's kind of burned into my memory. I was rotating in the surgical ICU and a very large, very intimidating trauma surgeon asked me to name all the causes of anion gap metabolic acidosis. I briefly froze because that's the general effect that this man had on me. But then I started naming them off kind of frantically in no particular order, not following the mud piles order. Uremia, lactic acidosis, iron, salicylates. I was just naming them randomly and I named all of them except for propylene glycol. I couldn't remember what the P stood for. So while I was naming the other ones randomly, I was trying to remember what the P stood for, but I couldn't think of it. So after I named all but that one, I just stopped. And actually like that was my answer. I figured that would be fine. I named six out of the seven, right? But no, he just stared at me and he goes, What's the P? If I could distill that feeling into some sort of elixir, it would be deadly. But now I'll never forget the P. The next key mnemonic is C big K drop. This helps you remember the treatment of hyperkalemia, which is elevated potassium levels in the blood. This one's not as commonly used, and I learned it as a first year medical student while working in a free clinic. I feel like this is turning into some weird slumdog millionaire spinoff where I'm revealing all of the weird esoteric experiences where I learned my medical knowledge. But anyway, I was working with Ben Levinson, shout out to him if he's on YouTube, and we had a patient with hyperkalemia and he told me about this mnemonic. So there's the C. The C stands for calcium gluconate. It's the letter C. Calcium gluconate doesn't technically treat hyperkalemia, but it helps stabilize the cardiac membrane so you don't go into an arrhythmia from the hyperkalemia. Then big stands for beta agonist insulin glucose. These are ways you can temporarily decrease potassium levels in the blood. The glucose is just given with insulin, so insulin doesn't cause hypoglycemia. And then K-drop, the K stands for K-exalate, and drop is really just D, which stands for diuretics and dialysis. The K drop part of it is the permanent ways to treat hyperkalemia, the ways to get that potassium out of the body. Poop it out, pee it out, pull it out with dialysis. This mnemonic is also nice because it separates the different treatments. The C big is the temporary treatments and the K drop is the more permanent treatments. Hyperkalemia is something you're gonna encounter in any inpatient experience, so knowing this mnemonic is key. And then last but not least is A-E-I-O-U. Probably not technically a mnemonic by the most rigid of standards, but I think it's really helpful to learn. It's used to remember the indications for starting dialysis in a patient with kidney injury. Contrary to popular belief, just having a high creatinine is not reason enough to start dialysis. A is for acidosis. Dialysis can clear out all the excess hydrogen ions if bicarb isn't enough to help. E is for electrolytes, like severe hyperkalemia. See the previous mnemonic. I is for ingestion. If you ingest some sort of toxin and you can't clear it through your kidneys because they're not working, it's gonna build up, it's gonna potentially kill you, you need to get it out, and you can do that with dialysis. O is for overload. This means like volume overload. You can get really significant edema from dialysis. If you're not peeing anything out, the fluid builds up and it eventually gets into your lungs and you have trouble breathing, that's a reason to start dialysis. And then finally, U is for uremia. Now just being uremic, having a high BUN level is not enough reason to start dialysis, but if you have any symptoms from uremia, then that's reason to start dialysis. So if you're confused and you think that's from the high uremia levels, if you have a pericardial rub, those are reasons to start dialysis as well. If any of those are happening, contact your neighborhood nephrologist ASAP. These three are probably my most used mnemonics in residency, and I think they're incredibly helpful and important to know. Hopefully, if you're starting medical school or residency or even just working as a hospitalist, you can incorporate them into your practice to help you remember the key treatments or the key diagnostic criteria. Let me know your favorite mnemonics in the comments and like and subscribe for more weird, specific medical content like this. Thanks.